Do you remember ridge regression? It's just the squared loss with L2 regularization. So I'm going to show you, um, after writing down the frequentist version that you already know, I'm going to try to derive it using the Bayesian perspective. Okay, so let's at least just write down the version we already know. Okay, cool. So this should look familiar. All right, so let's try writing down a Bayesian version of it. So here, remember, I have to generate beta, and then from beta, I have to generate the y's. Here, we don't generate the x's. We assume the x's are known. I don't know why, but that's, <laughs> that's the way it is. Okay, so uh, let us do that. We'll generate beta from nothing, our prior beliefs, and then from x and beta, we will generate y. So here, we force the covariance matrix to be diagonal because we want all the betas to be generated independently. We don't want them to depend on each other as they're being generated. That's part of our prior belief. And similarly, all of the, uh, the y's are generated independently of each other. They don't uh, depend on each other. They only depend on x beta. Okay, so let's, let's just draw that really quick with the, what the intuitive picture is here. See if I can find a good spot for it. There we go. So we start from nothing, maybe x, I don't know. And then we generate our beta, which we assume has a slope that's kind of close to zero. That's fair. And then we think about putting little Gaussian bumps along each point here and generating the y's. Just like that. Okay, so that's the data generation process. All right, so now let's write down the posterior. And there is another term, but it really doesn't matter. I'll put it in there anyway. This is called the evidence. And actually the evidence, the reason we don't need it is because it doesn't depend on beta. I'll just write it down anyway so you can see that. It's actually an integral over beta. And of course, if it doesn't depend on beta, we really don't care about it because our whole goal is to optimize beta. But we'll carry around for a while. So now, oh, I have to plug in these Gaussians. Writing the formulas for Gaussians is not very fun. Hopefully I can do it quickly. There. Okay, now there's a bunch of terms here that don't actually depend on beta, and luckily we can just lump those into one big constant blob. Let's just show you where those are. Okay, so I'll just write here, these are just, this is just stuff. This is some like constants. I don't really need those. Okay, so now when I go to write my log, negative log posterior, right, because I want to maximize posterior, so I want to minimize negative log posterior, then um, I end up with just negative log of stuff plus the terms that I actually care about. So let's do that. Okay, cool. I hope this looks familiar. This is just ridge regression. The stuff doesn't matter. I don't need any of that. Whoops, I shouldn't erase it. I should just cross it out. This is my squared loss term. That's my L2 regularization term. So I'm back to where we were before. And then these two, um, these two terms right here, the uh, tau term and the sigma term, these kind of group together to form the regularization. 
right? These are like the regularization parameter. And it doesn't matter if they're exactly in the right place, because when you're minimizing, as long as they control the trade-off between the two terms, then the sort of intuitive meaning is the same. Okay, so this is ridge regression. All right, so I guess my first point in this uh, lecture so far is that ridge regression has both the generative, generative and frequentist interpretation. So I showed you, this is the frequentist interpretation, which is just the loss minimization. And then the generative interpretation is this one where we can generate the betas and then generate the y's, and somehow we end up back exactly at the same optimization problem. Okay, so ridge regression has both the generative and frequentist interpretation. So I'll write here ridge regression, um, we'll do it like this. All right, and so this is the first important fact of this lecture. Thanks.